Hey, this is George. Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, George. How are you? I'm good. Good. This is Command Happy Hour for those of you who haven't joined. We keep it very open. If you guys have any command questions, I'm here to answer. Um, but if not, I was kind of thinking we could talk about some, like kind of open mastermind some ideas for like Facebook ads, you know, ways to generate some leads. Um, Angela and I had talked about this yesterday. She was, I think, just starting an ad. And I had just finished one. We had a listing go live last Thursday. So I ran an ad. I think it started Friday morning and ran through the weekend and had pretty good results from it. So I'm gonna Do you go typically run your ads just through the weekend? No, but usually we list homes on Thursday and they're gone by... Yeah. <laughs> the end of the yeah. weekend. Um, I do run some other, you know, non non listing ads that I'll run, you know, through the week. And I think during the week they usually perform pretty well too. Like I think a lot of our leads, I think I think it ended up at like seventeen or so. And I think throughout the weekend maybe like seven or eight came in and then I think like Monday and maybe it ran Tuesday as well was when a bulk of them came in. Um, so they seem to do pretty well on weekdays, surprisingly. Like you would think so, on weekends, they'll just be sitting around, but they do pretty well. You're analyzing the peak days that people are coming in, so you know what day to actually target for marketing? In a way, um, you know, for listings, I'm just trying to get it on as soon as possible and pretty much run it until I can't anymore. Um, I don't really like running listing ads once they're under contract, because then you have to call and be like, I mean, you can always yeah. call and say, sorry, this one's not available anymore, but, you know, we have other listings that we can show you. Um, you know, I don't really like pushing those listings saying, you got to see this, and then they're like, well, it's gone. So, um, But that said, I think it is good to kind of keep track of, you know, what days are performing best. And, uh, you know, because if you want to <laughs> maybe spend more money, like, during the week or on the weekend, depending on, you know, how they're performing. Right. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my... Uh, I have a question, so just let me know when I can jump in. Yeah, let's, let's hear it, George. Okay, so um, I prepared my first flyer for open house. I'm, oh, wait a minute, you didn't tell me we were drinking. It's happy hour. Oh, okay, <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> wow, I missed that part of the memo. I thought it was kind of a... Um, and happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's so kind of a make believe. Okay. This is Prosecco, which is kind of like Secco, or it's Secco, which is like Prosecco, but not really. It's just sparkling like a sparkling wine. wine that I put some pomegranate juice in. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. I'm not going to hate on it. I'm good. I'll get mine after we're done here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have a, um, my first flyer that I'm having, I prepared for my open house this okay. weekend. And um, when I prepared it, I had two issues. One was getting the, the um, KW logo loaded. And number two was getting my picture on the flyer. And then for some reason, once I prepared the flyer uh, on the logo, it was white. But when I printed it, it was black. So I can share my screen and show it to you if you want to walk through it or you tell me what's the best way to do it. Yeah, we can. Uh, if you want to share yours, that'll work. Okay. So just to make sure I got that last part, you said the logo printed out black? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that on, I've made some flyers through like Publisher in the past and I've had that issue. Okay. Um, so sure. I think I need to move you over here. I got two screens, so I gotta make sure I do this right. Uh, let's see. Uh, where I'm gonna give permissions here. Let's see. Where is it? How to do this. All right, see, so share screen. You still haven't given me a command. You still, it's still you. Yeah, I'm trying to. If you just rub your uh, mouse over the share, then it should give you a choice. That's Don't click on it, just it. rub it over there. Down at the bottom. Yeah, I see where it says that. Usually I feel like there's a little arrow that says that. Right, if you just, should if you just rub it over, it should give you two choices. It's not doing that for me. No? Hmm. 
share some advanced uh, weird. Not sure why it's not allowing that. Huh. Well, I guess for now we'll do this on my screen and then maybe that'll fix it to where I can. Uh, you want me to send you the flyer? Email it to you? Oh, there we go. So I stopped sharing. Now I have that little arrow. So let me give you permission. And that's weird. Oh, yeah, maybe because if you were sharing. Okay, sharing. here we go. All right, that should work. Share. Share. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. So um, the, the template that I used actually had my picture down. Can you see my mouse too? Yeah. Okay, had my picture right here in the corner, but for some reason, when I tried to put it on, it was it would only show my lip. <laughs> it wouldn't give me my whole picture. Huh. And then um, uh, when you go to, I think it's logos. Yeah. Okay, it's there now. Huh. It wasn't there before. Oh, everything happens weird. That's weird. Okay, so now it's here. Don't. Is that the right logo? No, that's not the right logo. It's the one, the right one says Atlanta North. Try Let's clicking, see. yeah, maybe in company. Uh, Library down. Okay, so yeah, if you could first show me how to download the proper logo and put it yeah. in the, and put it under my library, that would be great. Yeah. And then we can work on everything else. Um, so open up a new tab and go to kwconnect.com. And then hover over resources. And then close to the bottom, go to marketing. And then that first one. And then scroll down a bit and there'll be a search bar right there. Yeah, and then put in 170, was it 178? 178, yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. And, um, and it shows. So you have them downloaded? Well, there it is. So yeah, that'll be the file. And then you'll, you'll have to open that up and then like extract them to a different folder. Okay, so that's, okay, so that's, the, let me see, open this. Uh, let's see, where is it? I can't see this part because you're only sharing the browser, but it should say like extract all at the top. You see that? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So. Mm -hmm. So try maybe like highlighting them all or something. Hmm. Hold, on. hold on one second hold on one second hmm. let me see where i downloaded it before okay so you see it here yes mm -hmm. okay so you may open it yes yeah, so go ahead and open that and then try at the very top where it says extract and pink Looks like pink. Try clicking there. And then click extract all on the right side. Okay, and then click extract. Because this is what look this is what I got now. Yeah, I can't see it now, but but yeah. You see that? Yeah, there you go. So now, you know, if you put it in browse, you know, you could choose like your pictures on your computer. Like put that file somewhere you'll remember. Because those are all of our office logos. 
All right, so let's put it. Um, can I put it on my desktop? Yeah, that'll work. Did it extract? Uh huh. So now on your desktop, you'll have all four of those files. Um, okay, so it starts to close this. Yeah, close this. Close and now right. back into command. Uh, where is it? Let's see. There you go. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do this. The simple way, like once you're already in a design like this, if you go over to images on the left side, and then hit add right next to that. And then at the bottom there, you can click drag and drop or upload or whatever. Oh, right underneath that. Yeah, right there. So now go to your desktop and you should be able to pull in, you know, any of those you want. Um, so I think usually I would use like the, either the CMYK one or the RGB. I don't think it really makes too much of a difference. Um, see, maybe like the first one should work. And now if you click on your logo that's in the design itself, up at the top left, or oh, sorry, like within the design where your logo is. Right here? Yeah, click on that. And then hover over that imported one on the left side that you just brought in and hit that replace image button. Whoa. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, right there. It looks identical, but hopefully that one when you actually well, go print it should be white. Yeah, hopefully. And if that doesn't work, maybe try like one of those other files. Um, okay. I think some of them just have some kind of weird setting where the background like doesn't work right. It's okay. happened before. So, so it same won't... thing with the uh, headshot there. So it looks like you've already imported your headshot. Is that right? That's so right. it won't go to the logos page. So it will, and once we get out of this, I can show you how to do that real quick. Okay. But you can't do it from within the design. Okay. Um, as far as the headshot goes, it looks like you brought that in right there. Mm -hmm. that the, that's the one you want to use? Sure. All right, so go ahead and click on that. Let's see. Might look a little blurry to start. Um, but you can like shrink it down using those corner arrows and then kind of drag it into that spot you want. Hopefully it'll get a little more clear. It might be a kind of blurry image or something. So when you download the file, does the logo turn black or is that only when you go to print? Uh, only when I printed it. Okay, that's the same thing that happened to me with Publisher and it, I could not figure out why. I ended up just replacing it and for some reason it fixed the issue, but it confused the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> but hopefully that'll work. So for now, if you want to go ahead and save that, yeah, hit done and make sure it's saved and then I'll show you how to actually put the logo in the right spot. Uh, so if I hit done, it should save it, right? I believe so, yeah. I think it asks you to save, yeah. All right, so go ahead and hit that plus sign in the corner like you're going to create a new design. And then just hit any of those. Or maybe... Uh, Okay. No. I said any, too but too I guess, not email, I guess. Social, go or, yeah, go back and then hit uh, social or print. Uh, yeah, leave. All right, so from here, uh, 
try clicking on, uh, it's been a while since I've done this. Try that plus library on the right corner. Okay, yeah, so then go to logos. And this is where you can go in and upload your, you know, logos. That way when you're in the design, when you go to that logo tab, those will- work. They'll all show up, okay. Show up, yeah. So then I just hit um, the plus. Yeah, so hit the plus and then it's going. choose okay. from any of those. You can have like black and white, the, they have like square ones too, I think. I think you can only have four right now, but you can always put extra ones you want in the images, like just upload them as an image. Didn't like that one. Give me an X. Ah. Oh, there you go. So I guess that's maybe like a transparent one or something. Hmm. This is the black one. Those are the only three I have. So so go, back, go back to your desktop. You clicked on that CMYK file. Yeah. There's, this, a, there's some RG. different formats in the different files. So a lot of them like look the same, but some of them will be transparent to where there's no white background. It's only like the red KW letters and then the black letters. Oh, okay. So you'll kind of have to play around with them and see which is which. I don't know offhand what they are, but sure that one is. That's black. Okay. Uh, did I yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. And then I hit, I don't hit to say, there's no save. Uh, yeah, I guess it auto saves. So you just hit the X and it should, when you go back, and they should pop up there for you. I think go back to command, don't I? Or is it gonna let me, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of weird getting back there from designs. I don't know why. Um, I usually just retype in command and yeah. back that way, but. Transparent. There we go. Okay. All right. So while we move on, if you want to try to print that out and see if the, I don't know if you have a printer where you are, but I do. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's see if I remember how to do that. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Let's see. Done. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah go back. Done. Right next to done, there's that little down arrow. That's how you can download that PDF. I would do uh, the far right one, get PDF. And then like high resolution print quality would be the way to go for a flyer. Still blind. Huh. Yeah, maybe try one of those other logos, see if that works. Okay. I would try out the uh, that transparent one you brought in. That one should work fine. I think I'm, okay. I'll go with that. Let's see. All right. I'll play with it while you guys move on. Okay. Yeah, we can circle back to it. Cool. Thank you. Of course. The other guy's still with me. Angela's probably eating. 
<laughs> yep, still here. Cool. Sorry. Good. <laughs> All right, so I'll share my screen. I'll show you ads real quick. Lamar, have you run any Facebook ads? No, I don't actually have access to command yet. That's why I was just coming in. Honestly, I'm, oh, really? from my perspective, just kind of like a brief overview. Okay. <laughs> Are you brand new? Yeah, I'm brand new. I should be getting licensed within the next uh, a week or so. Oh, awesome. Congrats. So you have your exam in a week or so? or? Uh, no, I actually passed that. I'm just waiting for my paperwork to come back. You know awesome. how I been going pretty slow. Cool. We're excited to have you. So this is our crazy command website. I don't know how much you know about it so far, but um, so this whole tab right here is campaigns. So this is where you can run like social media paid advertisements. You'll run your email, like any kind of email campaigns. You can do direct mail campaigns. So we're partnered with real mailers to where you can make like postcards and send it out directly through here. And then you can also schedule your social media posts, just like non-paid normal posts. Um, so this, let's see, over here to paid ads. So this is that most recent one that I did, this top one. So I actually started it with Facebook and Instagram, which I don't know why, because every time I do Instagram, it just does not do very well. Um, so as you can see, I actually paused it before that total $10 spend, like about halfway through, I just canceled it because um, it was just not performing well at all. But the when Facebook- cancel, does it give you a credit towards Facebook or does it build a credit in your Instagram account? It just uh, gives you a credit towards your next advertisement of any kind. It doesn't like automatically put it towards the Facebook one. Okay. The next time I go to run an ad, I'll get like, you know, it's only like four bucks or something. But, um, but yeah, I went ahead and canceled that one. So if an ad's ever like just not performing well, I, you know, you don't want to cancel it the first day if you don't see a lead. But, you know, halfway through the ad, if it's just not doing very well, you can always cancel it, you know, try again and get that credit back. The, the credit doesn't actually get put back into your, um, like if you go up here to payments, it'll show up like how many credits you have left. It won't show up there until the ad finishes when it was supposed to run. So if you go and run like a 30 day ad and after 10 days you cancel it, you have to wait for like day 30 before you'll actually see that credit. It's not like as soon as you cancel it, you get it right away, which is kind of strange, but um, and a note. Um, but yeah, the Facebook one, this was my best one yet. I've, I've ran a few recent ones. I had some like when I first started in like the $5 range. And uh, these that weren't too long ago were about three bucks, a, three bucks a lead. This one came in at $1.76 a lead, 17 leads. So it wasn't horrible for five days, 30 bucks. And uh, <clears throat> so one thing I had see if this loads for me here we go so I know I told Angela about this yesterday so when you go in to create the ad which we can do in a second I'll pull up like the design software if you're running just a single picture you can do the like landscape mode to where it stretches this whole screen here but if you put in multiple pictures it turns it into a carousel and for some reason it just crops them into little squares so for mine, it cut off like Keller Williams, it cut off like half the verbiage here, it cuts off the sides of the house. You know, apparently it still did okay. I guess these pictures were good enough for people to want to give me their information. But uh, definitely something to note that if you want to do multiple pictures, I would choose pictures that really look good in that square format. Like maybe go ahead and crop them in advance. Um, but yeah, for this one, it was a brand new listing. So what I did, um, there's been other people that have run a lot more ads than I have that have said that emojis tend to perform, like putting emojis in your text tend to perform better than if you don't. I guess just, it just kind of catches your eye because it's some color up there. 
Um, so I went ahead and did that for this one. I did, you know, deal alert, stunning home on nearly full acre, cul-de-sac lot in Marietta. So I didn't actually put like what neighborhood it's in. I just said, you know, it's in this city. It's in this general area. Gave them the beds and baths and the, you know, some small details about the home. But I don't put the price in there because if you give them the price, if you give them the neighborhood, they can go to like Zillow and look it up themselves without giving you their information. So the kind of the part that that's kind of the tough part of creating an ad is like how much information do you give them to where, you know, it's enticing, but not giving them too much to where, you know, they have no reason to actually click on it. And then uh, for the bold, that's your... Uh, I think that's called your header text, which I'll pull up in a second, but that's the way I see it is that's like your call to action. That's saying like, you know, click on, click on the ad. Why? Because you can check out pictures and details. So, you know, kind of tell them why should you click on this? And then the bottom there usually gets cut off. So you can't really put too much info in. So I'll usually kind of do like beds, baths, acreage, square footage, something like that. Um, so that's a listing one. Let me show you one of these other ones. Um, so these are one of the first few that I ran. These were just like, I didn't have a listing at the time. I was just trying to get some buyers. So this one, I did a big square photo, just one single photo. I didn't use any emojis on it. So for this one, it was just like, buyers, are you looking for a good deal? Like we have a list of homes that recently dropped in price. So just a picture of that generic HGTV kitchen and, um, you know, it didn't do great. It was pretty small ad spend. I think I only spent like 15 or 20 bucks on it. Um, and then if they were to click it, it actually brings them to my website where I had filtered on the search homes that had dropped in price in the past, I think it's seven days. They have a filter for that. Um, so that was a different idea. And I did another one of those that uh, didn't do very well, where I used like pictures of the Atlanta skyline. So what, what trends are you seeing that do well? Specific houses, emojis, vague information? Yeah, I think like this most recent one, and this is, what I've heard from a lot of people that run ads, definitely specific listings do well, you know, for new agents who don't have their own listings, you know, talk to other agents, see if they'll be willing to let you run an ad for their listing. Um, Cause I think, you know, a picture of a nice house with a nice front yard, I think that's key. Like people want to see the grass. I think green is like, you know, you're scrolling through Facebook where it's like a blue header. I think like reds and greens really pop off the screen. So like this picture here was my second picture. I think people scrolling by would see the side of that and be like, ooh, that house is, looks really private. You know, there's a lot of trees there. So yeah, I think, I think single house ones do really well. I definitely think the emojis make a difference. You know, don't overdo it. I don't, I don't think you need to be like obnoxious about it, but you know, a couple of them just to kind of spruce it up and yeah definitely you know don't throw the address or anything right in that you know some people put like the address right here on that header and it's like they can easily just go anywhere they could just go to google look up that address it'll bring up 10 different listing pages um so i think that's a good starting point but biggest thing is like I had said to you yesterday is that that one picture, like some people aren't even really reading. They just see a cool picture and they're going to like click on it. They think with their, their eyes without actually reading, you know, pictures are what people want to see now and videos and you can run video ads through command as well, which I haven't done yet. I want to try one of those out. Um, but for the video ad, it would have to be like short and sweet. Like you'd have to get their attention in 10, 15 seconds. I think humans have the attention span of like a goldfish now. So you have a very short amount of time to really get them. Let's go ahead and go in here. 
So creating a new campaign, social ad, and test. So the goals on this page really don't make a difference when you're running an ad. It's just kind of for like Keller Williams to track like what types of ads are performing best. The only one that is different is this advertise multiple listings. So if you have like five listings going on at once, you could click on that one. And I think it's actually gonna create like individual ads for those multiple listings that go out to different people. Um, I haven't actually tried that one yet because usually we have you know one listing go up and it's gone so quick. But pretty much any of the other ones, like it's not gonna affect how it runs. You could click on any of them. And then you choose where it's gonna run. From now on, I'm probably just gonna stick to Facebook because I don't know. Maybe Instagram, there's just like different people on there. Younger crowd, you gotta, maybe there's some kind of different strategy that I don't know about. Um, so when you do a listing ad, it's gonna automatically pop up with like which listing do you wanna use, but you can just click the X and skip that. So you don't actually have to use a listing. I noticed when I, when I, when it prompts that, it gives me a listing that I had a year ago. That's how that one is. And I can't pull anything that's active. And when I go to the other one that says use other listings, it's nationwide. It is. Yeah, let me, I'll go back in there. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why it pulls like a random old listing. Like this is a listing of ours that ended up turning into a rental. So it didn't even like sell. And for some reason it's still showing up May 15th, 2019 was when it was listed. So what she's talking about up here on the right, you'll see only my listings is the default. So hopefully they fix this to where it'll actually show like your active listings. Um, we have to go to all listings. And then like she said, it's, everywhere in the world or everywhere in the u.s at least so you have like i feel like the search is kind of funky like if i just start typing sometimes it like doesn't work very well so we have this one and this address if i look up 3073 hallman it's like pulling up hallman road in wisconsin and but then if i keep going hallman circle Nope. I say that. Of course, now it's not going to show up. Huh. This one's under contract. Maybe that's why it's hidden, but oh, I have it under active. Let's try all status. Okay. So yeah, I guess right next to that, I guess the you have to change it to all status if it is a different one. So let's try this again. Now it comes up first try. So I'm not sure, Angela, if you're just not seeing it at all, I would first check like your website, make sure it's actually in the KW listing service that you can like see it on there. Well, I guess this actually pulls from like FMLS, so that shouldn't make a difference. What is your address? Let's try looking it up. Uh, let me pull it up. Ba, ba, ba. This one, Barwick, uh, Barwick Court in Marietta, 2184 Barwick Court. Barwick. Uh-huh. It's one that never, it didn't close, so it's not an active listing. Hmm. So it's uh, expired or? Withdrawn. Oh, withdrawn. Hmm. So maybe that is the reason. Maybe it has to be actually, you know, if you pull up the list here, you have like sold, closed, leased. No, when I put, it doesn't matter what I put in there. Nothing of mine will come up. Well, do you have one that isn't withdrawn? I have one that's active on the market now and it's not coming up. What is that one? Um, 1895 Shamrock Drive. Did I say that right? So 1895 Shamrock Drive. It's weird that you're not the top one, but you'll see if we scroll down here. 
Angela Presley. So why is it not coming up on my screen? Good question. Do you want to share your screen? Yeah. You um, how do I, oh, there we go. Where is that? You see my command page? Yes. Okay. So this is what for active. This uh -huh. is what comes up for active. This is from again similar to yours, May thirteenth of twenty nineteen. It's weird. Maybe that's like, all like, status you know, with campaigns or something, and they just haven't worked out the kinks in it. All right, so. But when I do all status, it'll come in down here. Uh -huh. It doesn't give me all of my listings. It only gives me 11. So go back up to, you have 11 active or pending? No. Oh. No. Uh, some are like sold or something. Yeah, I was going to say, go to all listings. So is there one in particular that you're not, you're not finding? So the one that's actually active does not come up. The one that's active is Shamrock Drive. That yeah. should be here instead of Barrett Cove. It should. And that's that's definitely a known issue that's just kind of a quirk. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're gonna get it fixed at some point, but for now I know, like if you go to all status, it shows up there. Or you can go, instead of to only my listings, if you go to all listings, you can search for it there as well. Uh oh, what did I do? Okay. Uh oh. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I, I clicked on something and now I don't know where I am. Uh, top right, you could create a new one. Or are you trying to edit, edit that one? Or I d oh, there we are. I just wanted to see uh, how to do it. And I, I've never actually tried changing the status to all statuses. I have to look on that for mine. Um, I always just go to all listings because I'm like, oh, it doesn't work. Um, so yeah, you have the status and you have the show. So if for some reason you go to all status and you don't see something there, if you go to that right one that says show and go to all listings, it should show up and maybe it's just for some reason not linked to your my listings list. So, okay, you just have to have the property address to specify. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, like, yours is in the top one, but you can see it, like, okay. down there. And so it usually pulls in, like, it'll usually have two, one for FMLS, one for Georgia MLS. Um, it looks like you chose the one that I would have, which is the FMLS one. So I've noticed yeah. that the Georgia MLS one like auto brands it with Georgia MLS or whatever. Like it's like if you go to Zillow, sometimes it says Georgia MLS there. Yeah. Like they put a little watermark on it. So all of their pictures are branded. Yeah. So something to keep in mind is when you select it for your ad through command, definitely look for that FMLS instead of Georgia MLS. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Now, your social media posts, <clears throat> are they specific to your listings or are you doing random? How are you doing your social media? Just like generic posts? Is that what you're talking about? Just posts, not ads? Are you there, Angela? Did I lose you? Oh, sorry. I didn't know I was muted. Um, there's a free version, right? The social post is free. Uh-huh. And you can schedule those in advance. 
Yes, yeah, I can show you. So, are you doing random things, or are you just what? What is the purpose of that? Just to engage with your audience? That's a good question. So, and there's a lot of uh, groups out there. Like, if you search like some of those KW groups and stuff, people have made like calendars for scheduling your social media posts. Because some people are like, what is it like? Uh, Seventy percent should be personal, like day to day kind of stuff, and then thirty percent should be like yeah. boring listings. And so I will say we're not we're not great at that. We don't do a ton of like here's what we're doing today. It's a lot of ours is just like here's a testimonial, here's this. But to answer your question, so you know you could go in once a month, and you could schedule you know one post a day or one post every other day like you know if you have some pictures of like you and like kind of day-to-day type stuff you know no one's gonna know like if you're doing something in the office one day versus the other so you could really go in and kind of like choose you know what kind of content do i want this day this day this day and then say you have a brand new listing go live you know you wouldn't at the beginning of the month have those pictures and like the details ready to go you could always go in and like, you know, post it that day, like new, new listing just went live. I think this is kind of like those days. So you don't have to sit there and think like, what should I post today? It's kind of like, you know, time block an hour, make, you know, a month's worth of posts that are just kind of like gotcha. ones you find in designs. Uh, I had just saved a calendar the other day. I can't remember where I had saved it. I'm part of this like Canva, which is basically designs, but different website. Canva for real estate agents is a really good group where they come up with all uh, stuff. And uh, I think Canva just came out with a calendar that you can kind of go in and put, you know, different categories for each day. So someone had shared one where it was like, you know, Monday's a review, Tuesday's this. Um, one thing that I love that I've seen is some agents will like, come up with themes for their days like I think I think Libby Bramlett used to do this is Bramlett right uh Bailey no Bramlett it, it Bram. was Bailey yeah okay Libby Bramlett oh, yes but she used to do uh I can't remember what day of the week it was but she would go like preview homes and she would do like Tuesday yeah, Tuesday, sure, yeah, tours Tuesday or, you know, Tuesday real estate tours or something like that. So I love that idea of like really coming up with those like weekly things. Because really when you're, if you're really trying to like get steam on your business page and get like that following, I think people want to see that consistency, which is what most people struggle with when it comes to like social media posts is are they posting every day or every other day like you should because Facebook loves that like if they see you're consistently posting and if you're posting stuff that people are engaging with they're going to put your posts in front of more people that's like how Facebook's algorithms work which is why like those social media influencers do so well is they like they know the system they know like what works what people look at and uh, I think this, like scheduling your posts, kind of gives you the chance to do those. Like, you could do like Tuesday real estate tips or something and go in and, like, at the beginning of the month, make four or five posts that go out on Tuesday where it's just like, okay, Tuesday real estate tip. Here's what escrow means. Here's what. Yeah, I actually saw on the other day that I liked where it was 31 days of posts. And every day, or it was not 31, how many alphabet letters are there? 26. So it was 26 and the picture was just a big letter, like A, B, C. And each each day this person would go on and be like, A is for, you know, attorney. Attorneys do this in real estate. B okay. for, you know, buyer brokerage agreement. I was like, that's <coughs> that's a good idea right there. Yeah. We need to do that. Can we have this linked to other groups to our Facebook page or does it just shoot from our business page? You mean like posting within a group that you're a member of? So if I start a Facebook group, am I able to feed things to that group as well? Or will it only go to my business page? 
I'll show you here when I go to create one. I'm not sure about groups, but I know you can have multiple pages linked to your account. So if I'm going to a social post. So for example, I have a, um, let's see where it is. Okay, I scroll down here, it says select pages. Oh, it just says Kevin Jackson. I've seen that. Yeah. I don't know why it's only showing my personal <coughs> name because it should show my business page. Okay, so maybe I just have to connect these, see if that works. So it looks like you can only do pages. So if you have a group that you run, I don't think it would work in that aspect. But if you have like multiple pages, which I know a lot of people run groups, which is something I want to get started. Um, I'm not sure if you could do that, but I guess, you know, once it publishes, you could go into your page and share it to the group, which is an extra step. I don't know if you can do it directly. Um, but if you have multiple pages, so I have like a recruiting page, so I could share it to like both of them or just our team page or just the recruiting page. Um, so I guess that's something to keep in mind when, if you're going to create something like a new page or group, I guess pages are the way to go if you're trying to schedule them through command. But I guess while we're here, I'll show Lamar and George who may not know. So with them scheduling a social media post, so these are not paid advertisements, it's just a normal post. You have your text box. So you can choose a photo either from designs, which I'm not sure if Lamar knows anything about, but we have this whole design platform within Command where you can create all your different marketing stuff from social media to flyers to brochures, all that kind of, that kind of stuff. So you can upload it directly from design or you can just upload like a picture you've downloaded. And you can do videos or you can do a hyperlink. So if I were to go like into design library and just look at some of these ones that I've posted or uh, created, I guess. Let's see. This one, house hunting in Woodstock. Let's try that one. ready to use. All right. Usually I'll actually just download it and then upload it the old-fashioned way. Go into designs here. That one. Maybe that's why it wasn't going to work because it's a Instagram story shape. So maybe it's because Facebook did not quite understand that shape. Um, just go with the basic one though. So else we'll do, do like I love Keller Williams. There's a basic one. You hit that download button, download it as like a JPEG or a PDF. I don't think it really makes too much of a difference. And then on here, instead of doing choose from designs, you can do the upload image. Just drag it right in there. You know, then Keller Williams is number one in real estate for the text. You might want to say something like, you know, thinking of buying or selling your house, like work with the number one real estate company. And then at the bottom, you have your little DBA logo, 
which for for uh, paid advertisements, it's required. So when you do a paid advertisement, you're only going to have the left or right options. You can choose, like you'll see it swaps from left to right side. Um, for social posts, you can just click the X and actually get rid of it because I think they know that with social posts, you know, you could be posting anything. It could just be a picture of yourself and it's not required that you have your office information on there. You know, this one has this default DBA name in the design I used. But uh, you can get rid of it that way, even though it says required there. And then down here is where you could schedule when it's going to go out. So, you know, I might want this one to be next Tuesday. Choose what time you want it to go out. Choose what pages you want. I'm not actually going to run this one. Actually, you know what? I will. I'll go ahead and schedule, and then we can see where it comes up on the calendar. All right, so I guess they've changed it now. You do need your DBA logo on here. So I guess that's something to keep in mind is if you're using one of the designs that you've created in command, you can go ahead and just delete whatever logo is in there because it's going to automatically throw it in here and you don't want it in twice. Uh, find this logo. Just throw that one in there. So we'll do schedule post. Page identifier. Oh, some here. Page identifier. What am I missing here? I kept getting that error message yesterday as well. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Their error messages are very confusing to me. <laughs> and it didn't highlight and I don't know if yours just did it or not, but it didn't highlight where the error was, so I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. So page identifiers required. So one thing I've seen is, we'll see if this fixes the issue. So sometimes when you get errors within like trying to run a Facebook ad or a Facebook post, you can reconnect your account and maybe that'll help. So we're going to try that. So within settings, we have our post scheduling right here. So I'll do manage, disconnect. And let's go ahead and reconnect it from scratch and see if that solves the issue. If not, it might just be some kind of glitch that's going on right now. But we'll see. So that's done. We'll go back to campaigns. Create campaign, social post. In there. DBA logo. Gonna schedule it for next week. That page. There you go. I guess that's your, the issue, Angela. <laughs> Disconnect, reconnect. Maybe it's uh, just some kind of connection thing where you, maybe they've made some updates and you've connected it uh, before the updates came. I don't know. So I tried it yesterday and I couldn't figure out what was wrong, so I saved the draft. Uh -huh. And I noticed today it shows published. Oh, really? So I don't know. I don't know what happened because I didn't I didn't finish it because I, I couldn't get past that error and I didn't know to un, undo it. But it shows published today. Huh. So I wonder if it's gonna post to mine like three times since I kept pressing it. And I, I did that with another ad where it wouldn't send and then it did send and I had to delete the other three because it was a total of four because I kept doing it. And it wasn't processing, but it's for some reason I was getting the message, but it was going through. That's interesting. So 
I mean, I guess it's good it went through, but it's annoying that it pretends it didn't and then you find out it did later, especially if you go and like pay for that ad again. Right, and, and I don't know what I did. I don't know if it was just a glitch and it's going to do that all the time or if there's something specific like you just did that I need to do. Hmm. Yeah, I would say, well, for one, to start, when you get an error, if you like, you know, take a picture of it so you know what it says, if you go to one of those like KW Command Facebook groups and search, like use the search bar and just type in like part of that error message, I can almost guarantee that you're not first person to experience yeah. that. Yeah. That's usually my first go-to and I'm like, all right, what's going on here? And hopefully in one of those posts, one of the higher ups has said like, this is a known issue or this is the fix for it. Um, it's, I've never seen it do that to where you get the error message and then it actually works. Actually, I take that back. I have in command, sometimes it'll say like, did not save. And I'll be like, all right, let's create the contact again. Then I go to create the contact again and it'll, uh, it'll be like that email is already in use. And then I search for them and I'm like, well, it did save the first time. Yeah. I don't know. There, there's definitely some, some kinks with command, which I know, and I meant to mention this because I took some notes earlier. I watched a, uh, <clears throat> a command Q and A. It was within the command your conversion group with Tristan and then, so he's one of the lab code agents guys and he was in or co-hosting with one of the actual like KW tech team guys. So they had talked about how like they're focusing on these huge updates coming for mega camp, which I'm really excited about. Um, so the first one is email design. So the whole like, trying to send out email campaigns within command the like design platform is just like a mess like you cannot make it look good at all um so they're doing a full like upgrade to that to where it's going to be much easier to use and like you're going to be able to do a lot more with it but on top of that they're going to have a whole bunch of like pre-made templates i think right now there's only like a birthday one and a work with me as a buyer kind of one but they're going to have a whole bunch of different email templates we can choose from to where like any kind of scenario we'll be able to use those pre-made ones or we'll be able to design our own from scratch and it'll be much easier. And then the last one is the team functionality, which I don't think anyone on this call has any kind of big team, but that's been like the big piece that a lot of like the mega teams have not been yeah. using because of. So they're going to have a lot more like functionality between like who can do what, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think, I think command, or I think with mega camp, we're going to see a lot of like, I think we're going to have like a big patch update to where a lot of like these little piddly things are going to get fixed. That's my, that's what I'm praying for. Uh, but if not, you know, at least we'll have a good email platform to start with. I'm gonna delete this post before I forget about it. If I can. Yeah, delete post. So to be honest, I don't use this scheduled post thing. I think it's amazing and I wanna start using it, but I just don't. I go in there like I go into Facebook directly every day or two and I just write something up and get it out there. I make a lot of designs within designs um but i don't actually schedule them through here because i'm just like i can just go right in and post them but i do love the concept of like you know beginning of the month just go out even if it's like a couple posts a week like you don't have to schedule 30 days worth of content but just a couple like take like four of your best reviews and be like all right every wednesday we're just going to post a review because once you start to like really automate your social media presence that's when that's what people want to see. They want to see that consistency. Like they don't want to see you post once and then like two weeks later post again. And you know, they want to, that's my struggle. Mine as well. So I like the idea of being able to be consistent because I, I, it's not something that I do often. And so I forget about it. And when I go back to it, it's been 10 days or two weeks and 
then it's then I feel bad that it was two weeks, so I don't do it. And then a month later, I'm like, well, I should have done it. It's a cycle that keeps going. So I like the idea of being able to boom, go in one day and knock out the whole month mm -hmm. and it's done. I completely agree. And I, and I totally understand that like, well, like it's been a month, like, I don't know. And then finally you post and you're like, all right, I need to do this daily and then you know another week goes by and so yeah i think it's a really cool concept and like i was saying earlier like if you come up with some kind of themes i think that'll really help like cut back on like you open facebook one day and you're like what the heck am i going to post like should i post a listing like there's a million things you could post i think coming up with those themes of like all right monday is you know money saving tips or you know I love those, uh, the ABC idea, like, you know, people don't know what escrow is and like all these different real estate terms that we live and breathe, like Alta statement, what's an Alta statement? You know, when I type, when I'm like sending an Alta to someone, I can't just be like, here's your Alta. I'm like, here is the settlement statement, which is this. You know, Are these videos or? Say it again. Is that a video or is it just? A post that says it was literally just a. Uh, it was in that Canva for real estate agent groups. We could easily do it within designs, but it was literally just like a black background one day, and it would be like a big white letter A. The next day would be like white background, black letter B, and it kind of like swap back and forth. That way, if you're posting it every day on like Instagram, it's not like every day is the exact same picture, just a different letter. They kind of like change the format up a little. Um, but pretty much every day it was like the picture was just one letter. And then in the caption, they would put like, today's letter is A. Like beginning of the month, they probably said like, all right, we're going to be doing like a different letter every day to kind of teach you about some real estate terminology. And it was like, A is for Alta statements. This is the attorney's form or, you know, whatever that breaks down all the different costs of buying or selling and splitting it two different sides for the buyer, the seller um very basic stuff to where like you know you just choose a word that starts with that letter you know you might want to plan it out at the beginning of the month so that day you're not like oh what starts with x but um but that was a cool way to just get like 26 days of posts or whatever it is is that right 26 letters now it's cool too long it's 26 27 yes yes 26 <laughs> Lamar, George, how you guys doing? George, do you print your flyer out? Not bad, not bad. I'm just uh, absorbing all the info and the little uh, tricks of the trade here right now. I hope you get command soon. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, looks like it's a pretty good tool though in terms of using that social media. Now, I did have a question on that part, though. Like, um, I saw that you had, like, the amounts and stuff like that. So is it synced with your social media and the um, it, and being able to pay it from command? Or is it taken out from command or on the... Um, Correct. Instagram? So have you ever run, like, a social media ad before, like, in any platform or any... Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so this is the cool part about command that... I think a lot of agents overlook is when you're running a Facebook ad directly on Facebook from your page, Facebook sees it as this like little tiny account that's running an ad. So they're going to put it in front of a few people. So when you run it through command, it's run through your page, but technically the account holder is Keller Williams international. So you're basically lumped into this page that gets like, they're running like consistent ads everywhere. So they, I think Facebook kind of pushes your ads out more. Like I've run ads before command came out directly through Facebook and my cost per lead was always much higher when I did it directly through Facebook. So I think that one of the advantages of doing it through command is you have, you're pretty much running it through this big old company, even though it looks like it's just coming from, you know, your business page but to answer your question you you can pay and everything directly into command gotcha gotcha 
create it there, you link your card info, and basically it's all running through that command uh, or the KW account. Now, I saw that you stopped it, right? So is that something you can do? You can stop mm -hmm. it within that week or that day, or or can you yeah, put so, a certain amount in uh, so how much? Any, any time, like, so let's say I run like a $50 ad. As soon as you hit submit, you get charged that $50. But you're right, you can stop it at any time. So like if it's a $50, $50 ad for 50 days and on day one, like you spend a dollar or maybe like day five, you spend five bucks, you're like, it's not performing well, you can stop it. And then you'd have to wait for the end of the period, but then you get credited back all that money that didn't get spent. So pretty much you can stop it at any time before all of your budget's been spent. But if you don't stop it, then pretty much by that end date, it's going to find ways to spend all of the, the budget you put in there. Oh, so to just spend all your money up. <laughs> you know, it's not performing well. So you definitely got to like keep them accountable, like, which is why they say when you first start out, you know, run multiple ads. You could run one, like if you have a listing, run one with the front of the house, run, win, run one with like the, you know, kitchen or something. I call it like split ad testing, I think. So kind of run like different ads with different pictures, different verbiage, see which one performs best. Use like low budget, like $1 a day. So you're not like going broke running a $100 ad over a weekend for an ad that doesn't do well. You know, test it out kind of with smaller budgets and see what does pretty well. And that's when you're like, like for me, you know, I showed you front of house, you know, put some emojis in there. Don't give them too much info. Once you kind of find out what's working, that's when you start like increasing that budget a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now, is it only uh, uh, pictures or is there video? Can you do video too or no? I can do video. I haven't tried it out yet. Like I've created them, but not like published them. Um, but yeah, you can create videos, which I think is cool. So you could like do a, make like a YouTube video for a full like tour of a home. And then like, you know, make that like 20 second, like you guys have got to see this house, like click here, check out the full video. You know, like you see every day when you're scrolling through Facebook, you see those YouTube promoters that are like, check out this video. So the Facebook ad would be that short one. That's just like, check it out. You got to see this house. And then they click on it. It brings them, you know, once they give you their info, it brings them to this full video. Um, Cause the big thing, I think a lot of people see you can run like video ads on Facebook and they want to like put this whole video in, but Facebook ads are all about like, you got to capture their attention in a moment. You know, they're not going to be scrolling through Facebook and stop for like five minutes to watch you walk through a house. You know, you got to grab their attention quick and bring them somewhere else. You got George. I, I pulled it up again and it was still black. And I tried to uh, swap out all three of the other ones and either it was, it didn't show up at all, just said Keller Williams, um, just Keller, it didn't say Atlanta, the Atlanta North part didn't show up at all. And then the third one, um, it, it wasn't clear. It was kind of squiggly. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I'm just use the black one. I'm just using I wish I could easily solve your issue because I know exactly what you're dealing with. <laughs> but definitely like, good. I mean, try out some of those different files because you know one of them's gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe not the what do we start with the RGB one, but maybe try. Hmm. The, I think we ended up using the um, CMYK or yeah CMYK yeah I think that's what we ended up using. Oh, that's all right. I mean, you can read it. It's you know, you can try to read it from across the street, so it's fun. Yeah, true. But you can see it. You can still see it, so it's good. Yeah, I'll get them. That's so I just, um, my printer, I guess, because it's using up so much ink, it didn't give me the uh, clarity. So I'm, I just sit in and put it on an email. I'm gonna go down to Kinko's and then I'll send it to their email and let them print it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, it should be fun. Maybe try downloading it as like a JPEG. Like we did the download as PDF, 
you know, maybe try downloading it in a different file type, just like a picture file. Oh, I thought I did it as a tape. Yeah. All right, yeah, I can try that. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe it will work. And if it downloads that way, you could either, you know, print it directly or put it into like a Word document and make sure it fits. Like maybe it's a PDF thing, I don't know. But yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know yeah. what the that is, but it drove me crazy when I, when I noticed it on mine, because I, you know, I, if for years, as soon as you downloaded, you noticed it. Yeah. Fine, like it looked fine, and then I went to print it, and I pulled it out of the printer after I printed like you know, fifty copies. It. Oh, but then you saw it was black. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. always do that test print. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Hey, Angela, I see your chat there. Thanks for coming. Bye. Yeah, I I, yeah. I guess I'm out also. That, that, do you do, Kevin? Do you do uh, help with web? Set up the web page. I I do. I have a uh, quite a few videos on it. But if you need like one on one help, I'm sure we can work something out in that way too. Are they on the um, KW train? Yes. Yeah. The Quan training. Okay. Quan training. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can usually follow those pretty well. In fact, that's how I found out how to do the fl the flyer. I just followed that video. Awesome. Yeah. If you. Yeah. It's been a little while, so you're, you probably have to scroll back a bit, but I've done one that's uh, like setting up the website initially, and then there's mm. a second one kind of on adding some additional pages, so. Okay. Look out for those. All right, then I'll work on it during the week, and then um, if I have problems with it, I'll just jump back on your call. When do you do these, once a week or once a month? We do them um, twice a month, so every two weeks, every Thursday, okay. every other Thursday at six. Um, okay, all right. So yeah, I'll, I'll try. I'll attempt to do it prior to your next call, so that um, if I need some help, I'll jump on in. Awesome. Yeah, uh, and you can always text or call me or email me too. All right. Give me your um. Hold on a second. I'll uh, type it in the chat box here. What's your number? You have your chat open. I'm typing it right here. I do. Oh, I see it. My phone number. Cool. I'll add you to my uh, list of resources. I guess if anyone watches this later and can't see the chat, it's PS Jackson team at kw.com, 770 P.S. Jackson, P.S. Jackson. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming. Lamar, welcome to the office. Hope to meet you soon. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Very helpful. Appreciate it, Kevin. Good deal. You guys have a good night. See you next you time. Too. Bye.